and see if I can take him. Of course. Welcome to Maida Vale. <laughs> All right, so just before we head off into Maida Vale properly, which is up that direction in front of me, we're going to have a little look around this lower area first, which is down by the Regent's Canal. Um, and to me, it's kind of a border where it meets Paddington and, and that area. And the rest of it is all up north beyond here. So let's have a look around here first, see what we got. All right, first things first, I've got to get this jacket off. Summer's arrived, and it's really warm to the point where the legs are out. How about that? All right, so made of ale, you might be asking. Why made of ale? How does that fit into this whole scuzzy London lark? I mean, look at it. Look at this place. It's pretty spectacular. Scuzziest of places. But anyway, We'll come to that, That's why the story brings us here. But in the meantime, let's have a quick look around the area and just show you what it's all about. Down by the river, or the canal. Let's go. We'll start off just down here and take a look at, uh, yeah, beside the canal, on the south side. So it's not really part of what I call Maida Vale. I guess this is possibly Paddington, maybe? It's all in the borough of Westminster anyway. So we'll have a little look around here first before we dive into Maida Vale proper. I'll show you what that's all about. Well, how can I resist? Take the right gears this time. Right. Come on. All right, let's stop you have a quick look. They call this area, just up there, Little Venice, but personally, I'd be calling it Little Amsterdam. I mean, you'll see why. It's just Houseboat Central. It's a really nice spot to be if you've got a houseboat. And then you've got all these flats and estates and things this side. You've got the A40 road just beyond that and Paddington down that way. But this is the life around here. In fact, we might as well cross at this point rather than going back on ourselves. Let's just watch this boat cruise peacefully by. Maybe she'll give us a wave, who knows. Is she gonna wave to us? Doesn't seem like it. Oh well. Well, we're already straight into the exploring. I've already got myself lost. My curiosity has already led me somewhere that I don't know where I am. I mean, I know we're not too far away from anywhere. I've never been here before. So you do what you do, don't you? You explore, that's what it's all about. Alongside the Regent's Canal here, which is beautiful. Of course, I've ridden on the other side many a time, yes. The other side is going to West London where I used to live. So just across the other side there, we've got the, the tower blocks and, and the flats of North Ladbroke Grove, North Portobello, I guess. Those sort of areas. Yeah, so straight away, as you can see, <laughs> we are in a much nicer part of town. Let's try this. We are very much going to go through lots of little streets today and see what we can find. It's going to be lots of left right turns, lots of, ooh, what's down there? What's up there? Squiggly streets everywhere. So let's check this out. We've got us a bike shop, it's a good start. Let's 
have a look at that. Excuse me around the pavement. Come on, guys. Full battery power. Right. Let's head down this one. Look at this big wide street. Nice big stucco fronted houses everywhere. Such a smart area. Get the park on the side, get the park in the middle, get the park over that side. Nice big houses, no drivers or garages, none of that stuff. Right, what have we got here? Uh, more of the same. Okay. I want to get back to my starting point. Oh, you're right. Sorry. I'm as lost as anybody around here. I'm not really that lost, but I'm just trying to get my bearings a minute. Because I want to get back to a, a point where I can start from, so I can work my way along and up. Lovely big houses, though. I always imagine what it might be like to live in one of these with loads of great space and big rooms. But of course, as with a lot of London now, most of these have been converted to flats, probably. Yeah, there'll be quite a few which are still houses. Maybe from the old money, people who've been here a long time. But uh, a lot of them still be flats. This might be Harrow Road. So let's see. Yep, Harrow Road. So we can get ourselves back to the start from here and then start exploring. I can't resist. Stuck in here. The result. Look at that. Oh, come on. I know this park, I ride past it all the time, but... Yeah. What I wouldn't give to live in somewhere like that. Just love these old warehouse buildings. They don't make buildings like they used to. <sighs> it's gotta be this weather. It feels great today. The short sleeves are out. The legs are out. Oh, look at this grass. Man, I wouldn't give to have that grass in my garden. As we would. Cane coming up. Have we got the skills? Oh, of course. Too easy. There's a little bridge we went up earlier. Right. I have to ride on the pavement here because it's a one-way street. I'm trying to be good. So the borough of Paddington, which I think will be this way. Is, I don't know if it's called that anymore, it's all part now of Westminster. So all of this area, Paddington and Maida Vale, is now all part of Westminster. Yeah. So that boat we can see just about turning around there now, just about to see it before it straightens out. Uh, and all those people waiting, maybe you can see them. They're uh, going to get on that, that's uh, London Waterways water bus, which will take them all down the, the canal there to Regent's Park and London Zoo area. So, I mean, if you live around here, you can get a water bus. Pretty unusual. All right, I just think we should just have a quick look at these people queuing up for the water bus, because it's, it's kind of a touristy thing, but I'm sure if you're local, you could do this if you wanted to. But let's go have a look, because it looks busy today. It looks interesting. There's also, <laughs> the name of the trip is kind of curious to me, Jason's Canal Boat Trip. <laughs> Nothing to do with me. Nothing. Although I do rather like that. Number one. <laughs> well, if I'm going to show you any scuzziness today, I'm going to have to work hard. Because seriously, this spot ain't got much of it. Whoa. I mean, most of these houses around here, at least at this point down by the canal here, are five, ten million pound houses. So, it's a pretty smart place to be. Let's go through Clifton Villas and see what we can find. Big spiky church, that's what I can see. Let's go and have a look. I guess this is gonna be our slightly upmarket video for the time being. 
we've obviously got this big church, whatever it is. So let's go down here and see what this underground station is. So here we have, in case you're wondering and you want to visit, this is Warwick Avenue Station. Never get off here, you get off at a nice spot. You can just walk up the road a bit, up past all these parked cars, uphill slightly towards Paddington, head yourself uh, slightly south, I guess, and you'll come across the canal. Right, just up ahead up there is the canal and the bridge and little Venice and all that lovely stuff. We don't need to go there again now, so we're going to head down here. There's an alley. It's awfully tempting. I think I'm going to have to do it. So I think I've been here once. Long time ago, of course. The Warwick Castle pub. Oh, how beautiful. Let's take a closer look. I suppose there is a pretty good chance of bumping into the occasional famous face around here. We've reached that part of the world now where, you know, you get your maybe your celebs living perhaps. There's quite a few living or have lived or are from this area. I can dig you through some of them in a bit. Now, oh, here, let's do this. Take a look at the Prince Alfred pub because this is a beauty. Yeah, we've reached that time of year again now when people are sitting outside pubs in the afternoon having a nice drink. Lucky people. But um, yeah, I've been in this pub a couple of times. I'm not going to go in there today because I haven't got anywhere to lock the bike up, which is boring. But um, what you find is when you go in, it's really unusual and really special because there's, how do I describe it? There's like a round bar in the center, an old round bar in the center and like compartments around it. And to get from one compartment to the next to the next, they are separated off with like tiny little doorways that you literally, no matter how short you are, you have to duck down to get from one to the next to the next. So it's really quite unusual. And um, see the round glass and stuff on the outside, it's really special. So it makes it a really interesting pub, really tucked away in a hidden part of made a veil here. It's great. Let's have a look. Let's have a cruise past. There you go. Hello? Hello? Is this Roger? Roger? <laughs> Roger? Hello, Roger. He's the Prince Alfred dog. Is he? Yeah. What do you mean? From the pub? Yeah, the pub? Jared who... Oh. Just, oh, this is his little baby. Okay. Oh, lovely. I must be very tasty today. <laughs> <laughs> Doing a free leg licking. How nice. Wow. I've got a big day out. Amazing. Yeah, well, I used to live around here, so I'm coming back doing a showing, you know, the area. Well, that was nice. We just met Roger. The pub dog, he gave my leg a good licking. <laughs> I must be particularly tasty today. <laughs> All right, look at this amazing spot. Blimey, I sound like such a cockney. <laughs> I'm not. Stucco fronted houses, they call them. Look at the size of these places, they're so nice. With their columns outside, very smart. There's another pub up here. Another place I've been once or twice. I remember meeting a friend once who was visiting and trying to describe how to get you. And I kept saying, get off the tube at Little Venice, get off at Little Venice. And they kept saying, I can't find it, I can't find it. I should have said Warwick Avenue, shouldn't I? Because Little Venice doesn't exist. The Warrington Hotel. Let's go around the roundabout and have a look. Here we go. Easy buddy, I'm going over here. Just a quick look. Very nice. Uh, says a lot about the area, how lovely it is. Yeah, keep going buddy. Keep going to the right. <laughs> well, I can't say much. I'm not a most law-abiding road rider, am I? Let's see if I can take him.
sport. Got to be done. One can't resist. More stuck on front. Of beautiful houses. What road are we on? This is fun. Here we go. All right. So this is like a little area of small shopping area, I guess. Like a little mini high street. We've got a salad bar, Tesco Express, you know, usual stuff. Cafe Nero, Pret, all of that. <laughs> Makes me think of Peep Show. Yeah, they got Pret. They got a Cafe Nero. All right, Jez. Keep it down. I mean, obviously there's money in the area, so. Are they paying nine quid a pint? I don't know, maybe. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, notable residents from the area include people like Joan Collins, John Inman, uh, Mark Bolan, T-Rex, he lived here for a while, Joe Strummer of The Clash, I mean, come on, York, even she was here for a bit, Noel Gallagher, he was in the area for a while, he was a regular, I think, and for you people who know a bit about cycling, and maybe a little bit older, like me, Bradley Wiggins, top man, good old Brad. I always thought he was more of a Kilburn guy myself. Anyway, Brad was here. Wiggins, not Pitt. Gentlemen in boater hats. I mean, you know, it says quite a lot about the area, really. You lot must be really wondering what the hell I'm doing here and why was I here? Well, we'll get to that in a bit. I'll explain why I lived here shortly. Sit tight, news is coming. So the building you can see behind me is the BBC's Maidaville Studios, where they've done a lot of their recordings over the years, for Radio 1 through to Radio 6, everything except Radio 5, I believe. And it's been used for that purpose since 1946. And in June 2018, the BBC announced plans to close the studios, to relocate them to the Olympic Park in Stratford. For a few reasons, but partially because the buildings are very old and need a lot of maintenance, constant ongoing maintenance really, to keep them going. I imagine that things like the tin roof cause a problem and, and different issues uh, internally with electrics and, and what have you. So they announced that they would make it a grade two listed building because there was talk of it being redeveloped and bought by developers and turned into more flats. So a committee of people got together and helped to protect it and it got grade two listed status, which was, was great, which means it can't be damaged or changed in any way now, and it'll be looked after for future generations. So the BBC itself is planning to relocate by the year 2025. Amongst many other facts, one of its claims to fame is that it is the largest classical music studio in London. But it is actually a huge space, as you can see. Hopefully you can see. Those stretches way down the end there with this enormous great roof all the way along. During John Peel's time here he had bands such as the Beatles and David Bowie playing here and Led Zeppelin, even Jimi Hendrix played. George Michael played a part, Nirvana, the White Stripes, they've all been here, all the big names have played at these fantastic studios. It will be real, a real shame to see them go but the buildings will always be here, it's just that the studios will move on. Okay, well, let's move on from BBC Maidaville Studios. I'm a little bit unusual in this area. Not what you would expect to find around these parts. Still, they did well. They've been here for a long, long time. But the time is up and they have to move on somewhere else. Okay, that road crossing in front of us. Hmm, I wonder what that road is. What does that say? Elgin Avenue? I think we need to investigate. All right, just as we explore this other part, and before we head on to our story of Elgin Avenue. Okay, let's do this in order. Let's go up here, show you a flat, first of all, that I nearly lived in. It was right up there. Yep, this was it. That block right there, I don't know well you can see it. I went to see a flat in there, and that, I think it was that room up there. 
it was really nice. And I don't know what happened. The guy, he was a little bit odd. He was a bit standoffish. He was just one bloke on his own. He was quite a bit older than me. I didn't know what to make of it. I wasn't sure about it. He didn't seem sure about me. Which was a real shame. Because it was a massive room. It seemed nice. But it didn't quite work out. And that's how it goes sometimes. Well, that's it for Made of Ale Part 1. Come back next week when I meet the world's cutest dog, find an old truck, get brutal, and ride through some housing estates. <laughs>